Hello, and thank you for viewing our presentation. If you manage to stick around to the end, I promise that there's an action sequence directed by Michael Mann that is out of this world. My name is Chris Adams, and along with Kevin Bratcher, Lee Chin, Pratik Gothi, and Lin Lu, we did a continuing coverage research piece on Crown Crafts Incorporated, aptly entitled Peekaboo Revenues. The investment research manager for this coverage was Timothy Henry. We will begin with our agenda. First, we'll analyze the entire juvenile goods industry. We'll provide a company overview. We'll do a stock price performance and target price. We will talk about Crown Crab's debt-free capital structure, its increased profitability, the projected reversal of declining birth rates, acquisitions, diversification, and product development. We'll talk about Crown Crab's high dependence on mass retailers, competition, risks, and valuations. Barriers to entry. Barriers to enter the infant product market are low. This is a non-capital intensive business and does not need complicated technological support because the products can easily be brought from foreign suppliers. There are many players in the industry, both public and private. Most of the companies are private companies with revenues of less than $1 million, which makes this a highly saturated niche segment of the textile industry. Licensing agreements and patents are hurdles for new entrants because they not only cost more but are also reputation based. The threat of entry is low due to safety regulation concerns, high fragmentation of the industry, patent and brand licensing constraints, brand recognition of existing players, a loyal customer base and a high dependence on the mass retailers. Suppliers do not have much bargaining power in, in the juvenile textile industry. The principal raw materials of infant products are cotton, polyester fabrics, and polyethylene. Crown Crafts, for example, maintains its relationships with its suppliers but retains the upper hand, which shields it against an undue increase in raw material costs by any individual supplier. In addition, the manufacturers in China have to keep the prices competitive because many countries in Asia and Africa have become major players in textile manufacturing services. These factors give the companies like Crown Crafts an advantage over their suppliers. The bargaining power of individual buyers in the infant product market is significantly high. Price sensitivity among buyers is high because there is no switching costs for consumers who can easily find products online and select different stores in which to shop. The major customers of the products are mass retailers like Walmart, Target, and Toys R Us. These retailers have a huge customer base and tremendous buying power, which gives them the upper hand in the relationship. The large customer base also makes it easier for retailers to negotiate favorable trade terms with smaller companies like Crown Crafts. Crown Crafts offers only a few product selections for direct sale to consumers online as not to compete with the web portals of these retailers. Recently, Crown Crafts started expanding its distribution base to dollar stores, food and drug chains, and international markets. The availability of substitutes in the baby product industry is low to medium. Baby products are a necessity for a family with babies. However, when economic conditions are bad, families might choose to substitute some baby products with regular adult products that are cheaper. For example, in spite of warnings to the contrary by the American Academy of Pediatrics, babies are often allowed to share bedding with adults. Because consumers are price sensitive, cost advantage is critical for limiting the threat of substitutes. Crown Craft's entire peer group is affected by a variety of demographic and social factors such as firstborn birth rates, higher disposable incomes, and safety norms. One of the main macroeconomic factors that affect the juvenile products industry is a steadily declining birth rate in the United States. The recent decline of wealth and the economic uncertainty for family also 
also affected the industry negatively. Crown Crafts produces most of its products in low-cost manufacturing centers in China, which makes Crown Crafts susceptible to rising labor costs in that country. Commodity price fluctuations also affect the cost of juvenile products. The ever-fluctuating price of cotton and rising costs of crude oil are the main commodity concerns. Crown Crafts manufactures its product from both foreign and domestic suppliers, which leaves the company susceptible to oil prices and currency rate fluctuations. These commodities affect the transportation and raw material prices and can squeeze profit margins. Costs of goods sold make up a substantial part of revenue. It's above 70% in the case of Crown Crafts. Foreign labor costs, commodity prices, currency and transportation costs are all key inputs to the production process. The industry business cycle is not heavily seasonal. The inventory management activities of companies such as Walmart, Target, and Toys R Us will be closely correlated with Crown Crafts business cycle. The United States Consumer Product Safety Commission or CPSC, is an independent agency of the United States government. The size of the crib and the fitting of the mattress used in it are some examples of what the CPSC regulates. In addition to those regulations, there are many other state and federal laws that are applicable to the industry such as environmental, employee safety, health, and safety regulations and rules. Crown Crafts operates in two industries, textile, and juvenile bedding and accessories. Crown Crafts is located in Gonzales, Louisiana. It provides key products like crib bedding, blankets, disposable bibs, nursery, and bath accessories. Our one year target price for Crown Crafts is $6.50, which is an upside of 8.33% over its current market price of $6. The discounted cash flow approach along with the following factors forms a basis of the market outperform rating. First, Crown Crafts management has a conservative financial policy which has resulted in Crown Crafts having no outstanding long-term debt. This debt-free growth strategy will be beneficial for Crown Crafts because of the uncertainty about interest rates in the future. The company also has available a $26 million revolving line of credit and has a history of robust and consistent operating cash flows, which makes it well positioned to make acquisitions. This is a stark contrast from the company's position in 2001 which was nearly $50 million in debt. The company has been experiencing decreasing revenues for several quarters. In spite of that, Crown Crafts has continued to increase its net income and operating cash flows. This increase in net income is mostly because the company discontinued an unprofitable private label bedding program. The company also reduced production costs because it reduces dependence on cotton by redesigning several of its product lines. You can see the blue line, which is Crown Crafts operating expense. After December 2010, it took a sharp dip while the profits which is the orange line, remained constant. Crown Crab's baseline demand depends upon the annual birth rate in the United States. The birth rate of firstborns is the lowest in a decade, and the annual birth rate decreased by more than 8% between 07 and 2012. Couples consider economic concerns in their decision to start a family. The overall economy has experienced a major recession followed by an extended recovery period over the last six years. The trend of declining birth rates is expected to reverse in the next two years by 2014. This is positive news for Crown Crafts and the juvenile products industry as a whole. Crown Crafts is well positioned to maintain positive cash flows through product line expansion, in market diversification, sales channel diversification and international growth. Crown Crafts is an industry leader in design expertise and is geared toward product innovation. It has a growth strategy that focuses on both organic and inorganic growth by developing new products and making opportunistic acquisitions. Crown Crafts entered the pet industry in 2010 by launching a pet bedding and accessory product line called Neat Solutions for Pet. Management is striving to increase the company's international presence along with increasing its domestic distribution base. The major buyers of Crown Crafts products are mass retailers like Walmart, Target, and Toys R Us. 
Crown Crafts offers only a minimal amount of online sales, which further makes it dependent on these retailers. These retailers have a huge customer base and tremendous buying power, which gives them the upper hand in the relationship with Crown Crafts. Recently, however, Crown Crafts has started expanding its distribution based to dollar stores, food, in drug chains and international market. In the highly competitive baby products market, Crown Crafts focuses on infant and toddler consumer product segment and competes with various manufacturers, large and small, branded and private label. The major competitors of Crown Crafts are Carter's Incorporated, Gerber Children Wear Inc., Kid Brands Inc., Summer Infant Incorporated, Lambs and Ivy, American Baby Company, Batiche Group, and even Flow Company. The competitive advantages of Crown Crafts are competitive prices, satisfying service to the retailer, attractive styling, and high recognition of products and trade names. A major operational concern for Crown Crafts is its product liability. For example, the company had to discontinue a line of baby swings that have been linked to infant deaths. Although Crown Crafts does not undertake significant investment in technology or research, the company relies extensively on its product development staff to create safe, innovative, revenue producing products. Crown Crafts could experience a loss of revenues if it is unable to renew its major licenses agreements or obtain new licenses. In fiscal year 2012, over 50% of the company's gross sales were from licensed products and 38 percent of those sales were associated with the company's license agreement with Disney. The contract with Disney is set to expire at the end of 2013 and failure to renew this agreement would prove problematic for Crown Crafts. Safety regulations and certifications are significant factors that affect the juvenile industry. Crown Crafts must comply with the Consumer Product Safety Improvement Act, which imposes strict standards to protect children from potentially harmful products and which require that the company's products be tested to ensure that they are within acceptable levels for lead. The company must also comply with related regulations developed by the Consumer Product Safety Commission and similar state regulatory authorities. United States domestic manufacturers and importers of children's products are required to certify that their products meet all mandatory United States Consumer Product Safety Commissions. According to Crown Crafts 10K, Breathable Baby, according to Crown Crafts 10K, Breathable Baby filed a complaint against the company and Crown Crafts infant products in January of 2012, uh, alleging that the mesh crib liner infringes on breathable baby's patent rights relating to its air permeable infant breathing technology. The court ordered the plaintiff to serve the defendant an amended claim chart by 2012. And as for financial risks, as of the quarter ended September 30, 2012, the current and asset ratios of Crown Crabs were much higher than the peers group's average ratio. Higher than average liquidity Ratios reflect Crown Crafts' ability to repay short-term creditors out of its total cash. The cash ratio, which is a more conservative liquidity ratio because it leaves out inventories and accounts receivable, is lower for Crown Crafts than average. Crown Crafts had a debt-to-equity ratio and a long-term debt-to-equity ratio of zero, while the average of its peers was much higher. One point worth emphasizing is that Crown Crafts does not have any long-term debt which reflects Crown Crab's relative conservative financial policy. Interest rate changes will not have any significant impact on the company's financial conditions because the company currently does not have any long-term debt. However, the company can be affected by the fluctuation in exchange rates because of the company's products manufactured in China. As the RMB appreciates steadily against the USD, the company's Chinese supplier could respond by raising their prices. Our 12-month target price of $6.50 is based on several different multiple analysis. We use price to equity, price to book value, enterprise value over sales, and enterprise value to EBITDA, as well as the discounted cash flows method. We project Crown Crafts will continue its steady but slow growth. 
We believe the multiples represent the steady growth and are a good indicator of the future stock price. Discounted cash flows also represent this growth and the steady nature of income and cash. The discounted cash flow method derived a share price of $8.14 one year from now. The discounted cash flow method derived a share price of $8.14 one year from now. The discounted cash flow method derived a share price of $8.14 one year from now. We use a risk-free rate of 2.85%, which is the current market 20-year treasury rate. We took a beta of spot 81 and 8.29% as our weighted average cost of capital. We believe that 8.29% does not represent the required rate of return for Crown Crafts. Consequently, we have added a liquidity risk premium of 7% over the WAC, forming a discount rate of 15.29%. We assume the cash free. The discounted cash flow method derived the share price of $8.14 one year from now. We use a risk-free rate of 2.85%. That's the 20-year treasury rate. Uh, we took a beta of 0.81 and 8.29% as our WAC. We believe that 8.29% does not represent the required rate of return for Crown Crafts. Consequently, we have added a liquidity risk premium of 7% over the WAC forming a discount rate of 15.29%. We assume the cash free we assume the free cash flows will grow at a risk free rate of 2.85% and model the free cash flows for 9 years before applying this terminal growth rate. Our price to earnings approach yielded a 12 month target price of $7.36. For price to earnings, we use a multiple of 8.6 times, which was determined by finding the average multiple from Crown Craft's historical price to earnings ratio. We then multiplied the projected 2013 earnings by this number and divided the number of shares outstanding to find our target price. Our price to book value approach yielded a 12-month target price of $6.16. We use a multiple of 1.47 times. Our projected price over book value ratio. Our price to book value approach yielded a 12 month target price of $6.16. We use a multiple of 1.47 times our projected price to book value ratio because we looked at this ratio from past years and found an average multiple. With steady growth, we predict the multiple for Crown Crafts to be close to, the, to its historical average. Our enterprise value to sales approach yielded a 12 month target price of $5.43. For enterprise value to sales, we use a multiple of 0.59%. That was determined by averaging the historical multiple of Crown Crafts. Using this average, we multiplied our projected 2013 sales and divided that by the number of shares outstanding to determine our target price. Our enterprise value to EBITDA approach yielded a 12 month target price of $5.45. For EV to EBITDA, we use a multiple of 634, which was determined by averaging the historical multiple of Crown Crafts. We then multiplied this multiple by the projected EBITDA for Crown Crafts in 2013 and divided by the number of shares outstanding to find our target price. Thank you for listening to our presentation and I'm sad to say we do not have an hour.